kort, maar wel heel diep een interviewtje doen. <laughs> Welkom te mogen heten in deze speciale Hivos avondvoorstelling Word Night met de fantastische film Capana. that we can work for equal rights and inclusive societies around the world. And with everything that's happening in the world right now, that's even extremely important. This week, I read an opinion piece by the human rights expert Nori Spauren about the way LGBTQ plus rights are the canary in the coal mine. She writes, minorities often see more clearly how power behaves compared to people who are comfortable in the mainstream. Nori was obviously referring to the oppression of LGBTIQ plus activists in Russia. We unfortunately know that this is taking place all around the world. In so many places where we work, we see how LGBTIQ plus communities are up against conservative, right-winged and even authoritarian forces. We are a proud partner of Rose Vildagen and we share the same vision, increasing the acceptance and visibility of diversity. I'm glad to hand out the Hifos Free to Be Me Award 2022 to Philip Talavera for his movie Cabana. But I can't stress enough the importance of this sort of award, not because it's nice to win an award, it is nice to win an award, but because it's also protecting the work. When we did Cabana, we were not quite entirely sure what the reception would be in Namibia, and we were not quite entirely sure if we would be allowed to show it in Namibia, uh, simply being allowed to, to show it. Mm -hmm. So Namibians might not really like to talk about LGBT things, but they like awards. <laughs> so <laughs> when we get an award, they tend to forget why we got an award, and they try to be happy about the award. And that was a little bit of a strategy we tried to use to make sure we would protect the movie. We were not quite sure we would get any award. But it is helping us, uh, because now, a lot of people in Namibia want to find out what it is about this movie. Um, and when we organize a screening, a lot of people want to come, not because of the topic, but because they want to know what is all the first about. Um, and that's really, really important because that's how we can engage people. And we don't just show the movie, but we have discussion afterwards. We don't try to convince anybody. We want to start discussions. Um, and I'm convinced in many countries in Africa, change can only happen if we have enough support from the wider community. The LGBTQI plus community is too small in many ways to influence change. The change has to come from the wider community. And we can only engage the wider community if we can talk to them. And coming to a movie is easier than having a real discussion starting from nothing. <laughs> Beste MVS-kijkers, het is echt niet normaal. Ik sta hier gewoon naast Simon. Hij komt uit Namibië. En Simon, uh, je praat uh, ook Nederlands, toch? Afrikaans. Oh. Wat is maar dat de, 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 de is taal. Wat is het verschil tussen Nederlands en Afrikaans? Bayern. Ik versta alles wat je zegt. Kijk, dat is dus heel leuk. We zouden dit interview dus gewoon in het Nederlands kunnen doen. But for the people at home that don't speak Afrikaans, we do it in English. Uh, Simon, you, you have a role in a film. What's the name of the film? The film is called Kapana. Ja, uh, wat is Kapana? Ja, yeah, I saw it, I know, but for the people at home, what is it? Uh, Kapana is a way of selling meat on the street by street vendors. So the meat is sold hot off the grill in Namibia. And it's only done in Namibia. 
What's the film about? The film is about a love story that happens to be between two men, uh, two characters, uh, George and Simeon. And uh, it w the story was uh, portrayed and directed by Felipe Talavera and he told a great story. <laughs> and I just happened to be lucky enough to be the lead actor. A lot of stories in Africa are dramatic. Uh, and I just saw Firebird before. There are this type of story, it's very dramatic. Uh, your parents can kick you out of the house, the police can arrest you. Um, but we didn't want to represent that. We wanted to try to give a little bit of hope and we decided to have a love story. Dramas make for better award movies. People like dramas a lot. Um, so we were not quite sure a love story would work, uh, but we are delighted somehow it's touching people and maybe after two years of COVID, we need a bit of love. Um, so we are really happy it's working so well. Uh, Philippe, who are you? Uh, oh, that's a big question, okay. Uh, I'm, I was born in France. I've been living in Namibia for the last 25 years. Um, I run an NGO where we use art to talk about social issues. Um, and most of my time I spend it either choreographing or directing. Me personally, I thought it was a really beautiful movie because I could relate to a lot of things that you love somebody but you don't know if he's a gay or a straight and, and you take the meat and it, it tastes good but you don't know if that's the message and then things happen and the stories and the families and the social structures pressure on you. Why did you make this movie in Namibia? Okay, in Namibia, like in many African countries, um, it's still illegal to be in a gay relationship. Illegal? Illegal, yes. Illegal? Illegal, yeah. By the law? By law. Okay. Uh, so uh, if you are in a gay relationship, if you have gay sex, you can go to jail, you can be arrested. Um, so there's a lot of discrimination, there's a lot of risks that you'll be kicked out of your family. If they find out, you can be arrested, you can end up in jail. So um, it's, it's not a very positive environment. But for the last four or five years, there's been more and more movement to challenge uh, the situation by various organizations. And um, we were, because we use art, so we were invited to contribute uh, and to contribute with a movie. And that's how the idea of Kapana came. Actually, love is never easy. It doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual. Love is never easy, but it's possible. And basically, you can love um, your worthy of love. That was one of the objectives. And the second objective was to put a human face. Uh, a lot of people who are discriminating or not talking about it in Namibia, just, it's always someone else, it's somewhere else, something else. Uh, usually they're associated with something quite disgusting. Uh, gay equal sex equal not good. Uh, and we wanted them to put a face to a gay relationship and we wanted them to sort of fall in love with George and Simeon um, and realize actually they are just two people. <laughs> There's only one thing that can save us right now. Cabana. <laughs> How can uh, people in Namibia uh, take this movie in their heart and change their Namibian view on homosexuality? It's very interesting because um, in various places when we've presented the film in Namibia, with communities that are a bit against um, gay relationship, it starts with um, a lot of lofer and people are making fun of George and Simeon and for the last 15, 20 minutes. And then they start to get attached to mm -hmm. George and Simeon. Uh, and because they are normal guys. They are normal people. And they work. Then, and then They have family. Exactly. They have brothers and sisters and mothers. Exactly. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, when Simeon goes back to George, people are, come on, he's making an effort, he's coming back to you, take him back. And they completely forgot it's two men. Mm -hmm. They just think of them as two people. Um, and they get very involved in the story uh, and they get very uh, passionate about those two guys. But it's interesting because they forget there are two guys. Did your wife see the movie? 
Yes, she did. <laughs> <laughs> she think about it. She didn't watch it with me actually. She watched it with a friend because uh, she wanted to have an independent opinion without me being there. But <laughs> she watched it and she actually likes it and she's very supportive. She's also an ally. Yeah. Why did you choose to play a role like this? I had to understand it from a different perspective and I understood it wasn't about me, it was about the story. So it was either I was going to tell the story or somebody else was going to tell the story and I, I wanted to tell it. But why uh, for you as an African proud uh, man, heterosexual, mm -hmm. is it uh, so important to tell the story about a love between two men? Because uh, as much as people ignore this, this happens every day. Uh, it's just not normalized because these people have to live their life in secret and I, nobody should love in secret. I mean, everybody should love out there and everybody should see that they're in love. After a few screenings, people came to me and personally told me, thank you, you told my story. And this was very, very deep and touching to me. We all deserve to be loved and we all deserve to have loved ones in our lives, regardless of who they are. And it's starting to generate some discussion about the type of stories that we need in Africa, which is interesting. And I hope we can help change a little bit the narrative that, yes, there are a lot of drama happening, but we do need more positive stories. Um, drama are realistic, but they are not the only reality. Uh, and it's it's starting to generate some discussion in other countries, which I like a lot, uh, and I hope we can have more of those discussions, because if we can inspire a director in Uganda, in Ghana, or in Nigeria to have another positive story, and then there is a third one, and then there is a fourth one, we can, we can create a movement. Beyond.